Internalized misogyny is the involuntary, often unconscious, internalization of sexist ideals about women. This includes ideas about their roles, how they should behave, and their power relative to men. It is shocking how patriarchal ideas are implemented into female minds starting at a very young age, stemming throughout adolescence and into adulthood, greatly impacting our society. Through socialization in the family and institutional settings, internalized misogyny takes everyday forms. From the moment parents find out their child's sex, they unwittingly start to impose specific perceptions of gender. Children's concept of gender develops gradually between the ages of three and five. Once children begin to think about gender as a stable trait, they start to incorporate gender into their identity. Parents influence gender by exposing their children exclusively to gender toys. For example, princess dolls and kitchen sets are frequently given to young girls, creating the association that girls are submissive, confined to the domestic sphere, and rely on men to be their prince charming. Meanwhile, superheroes and construction kits are frequently given to young boys, creating the association that boys are adventurous, independent, and enterprising. Parents also influence gender by encouraging their children to take up certain activities. For example, girls are frequently placed into delicate sports such as ballet because it is seen as graceful and ladylike. In contrast, boys are placed into contact sports such as soccer or football because it makes them tough and strong. By separating activities by gender, it limits what a child thinks he or she can do as a male or female. According to the gender schema theory, after learning what it means to be male and female in their culture, children adjust their behavior accordingly. By teaching children that they have specific roles in society and behaviors to follow based on their gender, parents integrate internalized misogyny. Children first experience social interaction with peers when entering preschool. What other students are wearing, toys they are playing with, and their behaviors set a norm, causing children to adjust their behavior in order to fit in. Children become motivated to relate to other members of their group and seek out gender-related information, often becoming very strict about adhering to gender stereotypes. For example, children between the ages of 3 and 5 prefer to play with members of their own gender. They also prefer to engage with gender stereotype toys and activities. This is referred to as the social learning theory, which is the theory that we learn social behavior by observing and imitating others, resulting in social reward or punishment. Children quickly learn that in order to be accepted by others, they must conform. At the time of adolescence, Erickson's identity versus role confusion stage is taking place. During this period, teens are on track to either figure out their identity or become confused, struggling to decide who they are and what they will become. When girls reach adolescence, they step into a world where they are pushed to fit in and find their place in society. Young women are constantly surrounded by different societal influences, which are crucial in shaping their ideas about what it means to be a woman. In pop culture, songs such as You Belong With Me by Taylor Swift and Do What You Want by Lady Gaga became chart-topping hits shortly after their release. However, the majority of the lyrics conveyed misogynistic ideals that girls belted out at the tops of their lungs. These and many other pop songs made it acceptable and normal for teen girls to see themselves as objects of male desire. Another influence on adolescent girls' view of themselves is the negative connotation with girls and femininity. Girls often use the phrase, I'm not like other girls, in order to distance themselves from femininity, positioning themselves in opposition to other young women while assuming this stance will make them more attractive to boys, less high maintenance, and more relatable. When girls say this, they create a cycle. This causes other girls to do the same, as they believe the reason boys accept them is due to them standing apart from other girls. This creates a norm. Because during adolescence, people are at Erickson's identity versus role confusion stage, unsure how to establish themselves in society, girls following external cues and ideas rather than following internal feelings about selfhood are more likely at this state. Dress codes in schools also affect how adolescent girls feel about themselves, specifically targeting their body confidence. Throughout schools in America, young girls are told to cover their shoulders and hide their knees, and that if they're showing too much skin, boys will be distracted. This practice tells girls that they're objects, and it sexualizes girls at a young age. In a facility meant for education and opportunity, teen girls are also taught to slut shame. It becomes established that if a girl shows off her body, she wants boys to pay attention to her, and so she's branded with harsh labels by her classmates. Social media, which is so prevalent in adolescent culture, has developed into feeding ground for bullying. A study from Desmos in 2014 found that internationally, over a period of three weeks, more than 200,000 aggressive tweets using words like slut and whore were targeted at 80,000 completely different female Twitter users. Further research on the study revealed that 50% of the people who sent those tweets were women themselves. The long-term effects of internalized misogyny are manifested in the workplace and politics. In the workplace, blatant sexism contributes to the wage gap, sexual harassment, and double standards. However, due to internalized misogyny in corporate America, women are viewed as inferior intellectually and physically. 
This results to most key roles being given to men, leaving fewer opportunities for women. The scarcity of opportunity along with their own internalized misogyny often results in women being pitted against each other in order to fight for the best position. Misogynistic ideals contribute to self-doubt. According to a Hewlett-Packard report, men apply for a job when they meet only 60% of the qualifications, but women apply only if they meet 100% of them. And according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, women are less likely to negotiate their salaries. This can partially be a cause of the wage gap between men and women, in which women make 78 cents for every dollar a man has earned and how the gap has been maintained over the years. Consequently, women that do negotiate their salaries are actually viewed more negatively, even by other women. Moreover, on the duplicity of misogyny, both men and women are more likely to interrupt women than men, according to a study in the Journal of Language and Social Psychology. As women are forced to submit to this discrimination, women are less likely to report sexual assaults, and according to a Merit Systems Protection Board survey, many victims don't find their harassment serious enough to report. Out of the women who said they've experienced workplace sexual harassment, 29% reported the issue, while 71% did not. Sexism in the workplace inhibits women from reaching their full potential, thus contributing to the disenfranchisement of women in our society. Misogyny is woven into the fabrics of the United States political climate. Despite Donald Trump's notoriety for being overtly sexist, 53% of white women voted for Donald Trump as president, while women of color overwhelmingly cast their vote for Clinton. Trump's sexist rhetoric and the disregard to accusations of his sexual assault establishes the normality of objectification of women, instilling internalized misogyny in women across America. I can do anything. Internalized misogyny is a real thing, and this is a, a thing that we, we have to be talking about as we go through and see. What does that mean? We, as a society, react poorly to women seeking positions of power. We are uncomfortable by it, and then we seek to justify that, that uncomfortable feeling, because it can't possibly be because we don't want to see a woman in that position of power.